the night's events and the actions of students and Dr. Hewitt following the weekend, drawing that amazing family connection back together. My hope is that we can move forward and mend these broken bonds by joining organizations here at King State, for instance, Fraternity and Sorority Life and Circle K, King State College has given me a place to call home, and the city of Keene has been so welcoming in making this place my home. And I will always be proud to be a King State College, a senior, King State Owl, and hopefully one day a member of Keene. Thank you, Emily. John D. Fernando, would you work your way up, please? And Ryan Alders. Hi, um, I'm a Keene State alumnus, and I'm also a volunteer at uh, the Pumpkin Festival. So I've seen it on two different sides. And I can tell you firsthand, as someone who went four years to this great school, that it wasn't the Pumpkin Festival that caused the uh, disturbances on that night. The parties, um, the rioting, those kids didn't come here from all around the region. They weren't invited here by a select few of students to come party because of the Pumpkin Festival. They came because they wanted to party and they wanted to have a good time. And, then the, and they knew that this was a weekend that it happens. And I think that the Pumpkin Festival is too much of a great institution. Uh, as somebody who's lived in the region my entire life, I lived in Keene for a long time before we moved to Westmoreland, and I went to Keene High School, and I went to Keene State College, and I remember growing up with the festival. I remember having a stake in the festival, winning its world records, and just enjoying it. And I think that by getting rid of the Keene Pumpkin, Keen Pumpkin Festival, you wouldn't be solving the problem. You might be deferring the problem, but real solutions need to be found to the major disturbances and riots and the reasons behind them. Um, but like I said, those kids weren't involved with the Keen Pumpkin Festival. They were having their own agenda. Real solutions need to be found, but you'll be getting rid of a major institution that many organizations enjoy, many nonprofits rely on for raising money, and um, it's something that we as a community really need to gather around, foster, and continue enjoying and enjoy. We can't let those bad apples win. We can't let them say that we're a select few of students, we're a select few of out-of-towners, we're a limited number of people that behave horrendously. So you, Keen, you can't have this institution anymore. One minute to go. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Right, thank you, Ryan. Now, now might be a good time. If you're standing in the back and you want to come in and find a seat, we'll, we'll pause for a moment while you do that. It looks like a lot of people are standing. Uh, lots of seats available. Or you alternatively make a new standing. Yeah, look, Bob and I, you have come to a microphone. We'll turn it over now to Becky May. Hello, I'm Becky May from Keene, New Hampshire. Um, the Pumpkin Festival, it was, it went well. Um, the problem was on Winchester Street, and it's not good behavior, and it's not appropriate. So I just hope that things will get better and know that, you know, I'm there for them, for them and help them because I have uh, Jesus Christ in my heart. I accepted him as my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I hope there'll be a time that they'll want to accept him as their Savior and want to have Jesus Christ at a time and say, there's a lady that prayed for me because I um, put them on the prayer list at my church. So we're going to be continuing praying for them and hope that things will get better for the Pumpkin Festival. And so I pray that things will get better and pray that we can have it be better for next year because 
I like the pumpkin festival because I like to see the lights and I go there as well to help me with my volunteer job of getting donations for the Penguin Plunge. So I hope it goes well and I thank you for your time and God bless. Thank you, Becky. If Karen Miles would step forward, and now I turn it over to John D. Bernardo. John D. Bernardo. Okay. I'm a homeowner of 15 Cobb Street, Keene. I've been a resident of the Island Street, Pearl Street, Winchester Street neighborhood for over 63 years. In fact, I've lived at the end of Cobb Street for over 59. <coughs> As such, I have seen the growth of both King State College during my lifetime and the Pumpkin Festival during its lifetime. I've witnessed the good, positive things that have come out of both. I've also been present to see the negative things that have come from both. One conclusion that I have reached is that the old adage, bigger is better, does not necessarily apply to everything. I came here tonight to address the City Council. The city Council will be responsible for deciding whether they issue or not issue a permit for another pumpkin festival. I don't blame the pumpkin festival for the violence that took place. However, I do believe that the pumpkin festival has achieved the status of attractive nuisance. I believe it's become a rallying point for troublemakers, much the same as the abandoned building in the neighborhood that the owner didn't secure it becomes a meeting place for mischief makers and troublemakers. And as such, the City Council bears a responsibility for whatever it decides. The City Council is the Board of Directors of the Incorporated City of Keene. Shareholders, the shareholders, the, city, the citizens of Keene, have voted you into office to represent us and to act in the best interest of the people of Keene. When this decision comes, I'm sure there will be discussion about certain provisions, restrictions, requirements. I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion by the City Council. What I want from the City Council is an assurance that the first and foremost question in my and the answer, I hope, will be when I make a decision as an individual, am I acting in the best interests of the people of Keene? Not the best interests of this group or that group or this organization. One minute remaining or this particular small sliver of Keene, but everybody in Keene. I have enjoyed the Pumpkin Festival, but I have not enjoyed the things that have gone on around me. I would like to enjoy a Pumpkin Festival in the future, but I don't ever want to have to endure one again, like this last one and other ones before it. There were smaller instances. Now it got so big that it made international news. I want your assurance that you're thinking of all the people in Keene when you make these decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bernardo. Larry Phillips, you're the next in queue after the two folks already standing. So now, Bob Lyle. My name is Bob Lyle. I'm a voter of the college. I live on Main Street here in Keene. I have a fairly long-term investment in both the college and the community. I was born at Elliott Community Hospital, which is now Elliott Hall and Keene State College. I live a block and a half from here. I worked for the Keene Central for 40 years now. I've been a member of the Lions Club for 30 years now. I'm a past president of the Chamber of Commerce and a past president of the Lions Club. None of that has to do with what I'm here to talk about tonight. What I'm here to talk about tonight is quite simply that I had to spend four and a half hours on that particular evening standing on my front porch guarding my property from people who were intoxicated, drunk, and having a good time. That's unacceptable. I bought the house 25 years ago. I can tell you right now that the Pumpkin Festival this year was not an isolated incident. It was simply the culmination of the previous years in terms of what was happening. Parties continue on a regular basis, and that's fine, but apparently we've lost the ability to party without being loud and inflicting ourselves on the neighborhood. We've had an escalation. This final year was yet another culmination. I don't want to see another year 
with a bigger increased situation than what we had this year because I would hate to have to hire armed guards to protect my property. That would be a very sad situation. So I would encourage everyone, if they choose to go forward with a pumpkin festival situation, that they better be darn sure that it doesn't escalate. It simply serves as a focal point for having a big party, and I understand that, but I also know it's unacceptable. Thank you, Bob. Uh, the, the next one to come into queue is Larry Phillips, and now Karen Lyle. Hello there. He's tall and short, so the mic has to come down. Thank you all for pulling this gathering together. I think it's a really important night. I have one question. How do I get a copy of the Keene State College Code of Conduct? It's online. It's online? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. And now the next one comes to the microphone and queue up is Chuck Simpson and Larry. Larry Phillips? Yes, you know. Uh, I'm Larry Phillips. I'm a state representative representing Keene. Um, and uh, I've lived here since 1980. I've uh, gone to many pumpkin festivals. I don't think this is about the pumpkin festival. I don't think it's about the pumpkin festival in general, or this pumpkin festival in particular. Uh, my, uh, I'm retired now, but one of the things I've done is work at colleges all my life, and Franklin Pierce for a long time, and uh, responsible for a lot of the alcohol policies at Franklin Pierce. I know how to drink, I know what it's about, I know what happens. Uh, to me, this is about binge drinking, and how it gets carried away, and disinhibition that comes from, from college drinking. Um, I hope that this is an opportunity because uh, throughout the years, every year after the Pumpkin Festival, somebody from Keene State would make a statement in the newspaper and there was something was going to be done and every year something else happens and another statement comes forward. Now we've gotten to the point where something has to be done. Some accountability, responsibility. Um, these people that are in this college are students, they're adults. It's not kids will be kids, boys will be boys. There's responsibility. And I hope King State takes the responsibility to finally do something about college drinking on campus and off campus and make people responsible and not ruin the pumpkin festival because of it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, next, I want to call two names because I split in time. So John Hayes and Chelsea Lagerberger. Or Lagerberg. So Chuck. Hello, my name is Chuck Simpson. I have moved to the area in 1985, and I live and work in the Keene area. I live in Dublin. I am a proud father of a Keene State graduate. Um, Keene meant everything about when she was going to school. So Keene is very dear to my heart. I liked all the words that were said about how we need to come together as a community, because when we use the word they, when we say they should do this, they should take care of this, it means that someone else needs to take care of it for you. What I would like to hear is the word we. When we can all do something, or I can do something, it all needs to come together, and I really appreciate this. Person. I also have a little antidote to put together. And if you were planning a backyard picnic and you wanted all your invite, invited guests to be fun, safe, and all of a sudden you discovered that there was a hornet's nest in the backyard, and you know the nest is there, what do you do? It gets bigger and bigger each day as your picnic is about ready to arrive. Now, 
Hornets and wasps are very vital to the community. They take care of harmful insects. They are needed in the community. But you have to take care of this nest. So if you plan and try to alleviate the nest and take it out in a very thoughtful manner. And my last comment is, or you go up to it with a baseball bat and hit it as hard as you can and see what happens. My thought is, let's try to think about how we can deal with what is going on. One minute. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Robert Nass, if you make your way up, and now it's John Hayes. Evening. I'm John Hayes. I'm a uh, board member of Let It Shine. And uh, four years ago, I signed up to help start Let It Shine and keep the festival going. And I didn't really understand what I was getting into back then. Uh, in particular, particularly, I didn't understand the scope of the problems at Keene State in terms of the uh, drinking that goes along with as at the Pumpkin Festival. And for four years, we've, we've tried to uh, address these as best we could, given the fact that we're just a nonprofit. We have no real control over the students or ability to make laws or police them. Uh, we've done things in public relations campaigns, and we've done, we've done uh, outreach, we've had public forums. This is all that our Ruth Sterling, who, who saw it as a need to uh, keep the festival going, is to address these issues. And we've tried um, over the years to engage the administration on, on these issues uh, without much success. But over the over the, that time, we've also I've also had the opportunity to meet some some great uh, Keene State College students who are really community minded, and they they're 